Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at some of the basic tools in Adobe InDesign to help you get started. Okay, so if you're familiar with Photoshop and Illustrator, you may find this uh, a little bit easier. If you're not, that's absolutely fine. So we've got the arrow tool over here. This is used for selecting objects. We've got the direct selection tool, which is used for selecting parts of objects. So if I just create a shape here, fill this with black. You'll see with the arrow tool, I can move this shape around. With the direct selection tool, I can click on individual points and I can pull those around and edit them. That's the main difference between those two selection tools. We've then got the type tool. If you left click and hold, you get the type on a path tool as well. So the type tool is simply left click, drag to draw a kind of a text box and then you can type within this text box. And then when it hits the edge, it will wrap onto the line below. And then when I go back and I adjust the size of the text box, you'll see that it adjusts the line break accordingly. Now if I want to type on a path, let's just use the pen tool and draw a shape. So there's my path I've created. And then I can select the type on a path tool Wait for the plus, so there we go, I can click that, and then I can type, and it will type along that path. Okay. We've then got the line tool, which is pretty self-explanatory. It just allows you to draw lines. And you can select a color, and then increase or decrease the weight of that line. Now I've got the pen tool. If you left click and hold, you'll see you get the same options as you do in Photoshop and Illustrator. So you can use the pen tool to create unique, weird and wonderful shapes and then join it up and add a fill. Okay, and similarly to uh, Adobe Illustrator, you have your main fill here and then the one behind is your stroke or your outline. So if I select this, you'll see I've got a black fill and no outline. If I select the outline and then pick yellow and then increase the weight here, you'll see that it changes the outline as well. And then I can go and get rid of the fill if I want to and it leaves just the outline. Next, we've got our pencil tool, which I can draw a freehand shape. And then again, just select a color and increase the weight of the stroke. I'm not sure exactly what that's meant to be, but yeah. Now, because I've drawn this freehand, you can see it isn't particularly smooth and it's a bit kind of crooked and looks a bit awkward in places. So if I select this and left click on the pencil tool and go to the smooth tool, just kind of left clicking, dragging and running over this. As you can see, it's smoothing out. I mean, look at this, this one here. It smooths out. The more I left click and just go over these areas, the more it smooths out these kind of jagged points into more of a curve. And I can also left click and select the erase tool and just erase anchor points from the shape like this. Next we've got the rectangle tool, ellipse tool and the polygon tool. And you can left click anywhere on the page, specify your width and height and click OK. Same with the polygon tool, you can specify the number of sides. So if I said six, it would create something that looks like this. And then you can adjust it as you like. And again, the direct selection tool, we can then click on those points and bring them in if we wanted to, or push them out. So that tool is really good for editing the individual points on a shape. We've also got the placeholder shape here. 
So if you've got some imagery or some photography that you're going to drop in or you're just mocking up wireframes, you can just place that there. And it will just have a big X through the middle. So you won't be able to see it in uh, kind of the sort of the final print view. But if you press W to switch between the two, you can see it in this view. And it just signifies that there's going to be some content going there. And then when you've got the content, if it's a photograph or an image, you can just left click, go to File, Place, and then just select the file. And then it will add it into here. Okay. So we've got the scissor tool. We can click on that. And this allows you to click and create a point and then almost cut into it. It's a bit of a strange one and it probably probably would takes a bit of uh, kind of just practicing with it and playing with it to kind of really understand how it works. It's not something that I use particularly often, but I have used it in the past, but it's quite a bizarre tool. As you can probably tell from whatever on earth that is that I've just created. But let's create another shape. And we've got the scale tool here and the rotate. So free transform tool. It just allows us to edit the shape. Nothing particularly special there. Rotate tool, as the name suggests, allows you to rotate the shape. The rotation can also be adjusted up here. So we can go to 90. We've also got the scale tool, which allows you to scale it up or scale it down. And then lastly, we've got the shear tool, which allows you to shear it left to right, like that. And that shear setting can also be adjusted up here in this box underneath rotation. Nope, it won't let me do that. And then just a couple more left to go. So we've got the gradient tool. So similarly to Illustrator, you can just select your gradient over here on the right in the palette and then just drag to create your gradient. And then this one here is a gradient that runs to a fade. So you can do the same again. Actually, let's do that on a solid color so you can see. So if I apply that here, you'll see it just fades that pink out to nothing. And just to show you that there's no, uh, it's not fading to white, it's fading to transparency. I'm just gonna put that yellow underneath. So you can see that it's fading to nothing. Or yellow, because the yellow is behind it. Okay. And we've got the hand tool, which lets you move the document around. Not particularly exciting. We've got the zoom tool, which lets you zoom in and out. Again, not that exciting. The eyedropper tool is quite handy. So if you have a, a shape or an image or anything with a color on it and you don't know what that color is, you can click it and it will select it here and tell you. And by double clicking this, it will give you the reference numbers or the CMYK values, whatever you need. And you can potentially go and create a color swatch from that. Okay, so those are the most important basic shapes in Adobe InDesign. I hope that was helpful. If it was, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a like and I'll see you in my next video.